Get your Christmas shopping done today. StuDoesMerch.com. We've got the always popular Santifa Claus, uh, one of my favorites and one of our best sellers as well right here. Uh, it's, it says, it's not a riot. It's just a mostly peaceful tree lighting. And it's got a nice city landscape, uh, kind of reminiscent of the George Floyd riots. It's, you'll, you'll, you'll really appreciate it. The code is Stu10, 10% uh, off at StuDoesMerch.com. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel right now. Please like the video right now and hit the bell for reminders right now. All in that order, please. Thank you. Dan Andros is here. Uh, he's going to have uh, share with me an exciting and eh, potentially friendship shattering round of true or false. I'll gloat about the Eagles win last night and try to keep my Taylor Swift fanboying to a minimum, which will be very easy for me to do. But we start by doing the second worst Thanksgiving ever. Yes, it's not the worst. It's not the worst. It's the second worst. And you think, well, wait a minute. Isn't Joe Biden still president? That must mean it's the worst. No, no, no. It's the second worst. I'll explain that in a minute. But first, a word from our glorious president. Now, just to get here, Liberty and Bell had to beat some tough odds in competition. They had to work hard to show patience and be willing to travel over a thousand miles. You could say even this harder than getting a, a ticket to the Renaissance tour or, or, or uh -oh. Brittany's tour. She's down in, it's kind of warm in Brazil right now. <laughs> I mean, I really, we deserve this for something we've done. I just don't know what it is. I, we, this must be retribution for some terrible action we've taken in the past. Uh, it is really amazing. Of course, the White House, I want you to think it's not the second or even the worst or the second worst or even the third worst Thanksgiving ever. They want you to know that everything is fantastic. And Corinne Jean-Pierre is always around to lie about these sorts of things. Here she is yesterday giving us a new uh, menu of uh, all the ways that Thanksgiving prices are down. They're bragging about this, uh, how low prices are, which is really incredible. Here's Corinne Jean-Pierre reading. And as we start preparing our Thanksgiving meals, grocery inflation is at its lowest level in over two years, with prices for eggs, milks, bacon, and fresh veggies lower milks? than last year. Which milks? In fact, according to the American Farm Bureau, the cost of a Thanksgiving dinner fell this year. Prices are down for turkey, stuffing, peas, cranberries, pie crust, and whipping cream. And whipping Cream. Who says it like that? Whi whipping cream. She's obviously, again, she's just reading this. She's never seen any of these words before, most likely. Uh, congratulations to Corinne Jean-Pierre for getting through that paragraph of just, does anyone believe this? Oh, wow. What a thing to brag about. A slight reduction uh, in the price. Um, let's give me give you a little bit more of the priorities from the White House. Again, from Corinne Jean-Pierre and her eyes, which reads read words off of pages and then she repeats them to you. Go. Lowering costs for Americans continues to be the president's top economic priority. Oh, look at that. From strengthening supply supply chains to lowering energy and health care costs to cracking down on price gouging. Does she by have eyes? She's always looking down. It's hard to tell. Fees. Mm -hmm. President Biden's policy will continue bringing relief to American families. I mean, just quick pitch here. What if we just have the sign language only for these things? The sign language lady comes out. She just does it. She's certainly better than Corinne Jean-Pierre at this. Now, you're going to be shocked to hear that this is not the full story from Corinne Jean-Pierre. The White House claims Thanksgiving meal prices are down, but that's not the whole story. No freaking way. Yes, of course, from the exact report she was uh, reading from, You'd think at least that one backs her up. Well, not really. Um, here is the Thanksgiving dinner. This is the average cost for 10 people. Uh, $53.31 in 2021, $64.05 in 2022, and $61.17 in 2023. So it's obviously way up from two years ago, but it's slightly down from last year. And so the White House thought it was a good idea to come out and brag about that to you. That's what they thought today should be used for, to brag about how prices are slightly down. And the report does say this year they are slightly down. Total of $61.17, down 4.5% compared to 22, but up 25% compared to 2019, which of course would make a little bit more sense to compare it to, not the highest priced year in our history, 
but maybe the pre-pandemic year when things were normal and the other guy was president. That might be a good year to compare it to. Um, and if you kind of go through the individual uh, items, their way up, we'll go through that in a second. But here is the, uh, the graph, 2023 Thanksgiving dinner. You see, it was almost entirely flat from the years 2011 to 2020. Then Joe Biden got in and it went almost straight up. And if you see at the very peak of that mountain, there is a slight re, uh, uh, regression to the previous uh, mean, uh, which is we're still way above that, but a slight regression. And if you notice that big difference there between the cost and the inflation adjusted cost, it's fascinating to note the difference there. 6117 to 1988, over $40 in difference. Now, not all of that is Joe Biden. I mean, let's be fair. He was only in the highest uh, levels of government for what? It's only been, it'll only wind up being 12 of 20 years. Um, so I mean, I, what, what could he possibly have done in that period? Of course, he was high level in Senate uh, in, uh, or no, it was 12 of 16. Sorry, gosh, I gave Trump two terms there. 12 of 16 years. Ah, I mean, it's totally understandable he had nothing to do with this. And, of course, he was in the Senate pushing things like the farm bill through over and over and over again. And, and that was the result uh, of that. Now, of course, when he was a vice president, $40 actually was a big, big deal. Now it makes almost no difference. In fact, now it's just, you know, look, you can't even look at that stuff. Don't worry about the long-term gains in the price here. Instead, just focus on the short-term recession. Um, Back in the day, they did a whole thing about how, uh, for what does $40 mean to you? And they had uh, montages of people talking about it because this was when uh, the Obama administration passed a delay in a, in a tax increase. So it wasn't that they actually gave you $40, it's that they didn't steal 40 additional dollars from you for a short period of time. And that was absolutely wonderful. Um, so this goes back to a theme here with Joe Biden, and this is a theme to his campaign. You'll be seeing this over and over and over again. We'll give you a million examples of it over the next year that Joe Biden, when he gets to the second worst of all time in any given scenario, he will brag about it. Now, of course, he is also responsible for the worst of all time in all of these scenarios. So, for example, the highest prices we've ever had were in 2022. He has a slight improvement in 2023, not back to 2021 or 2019 levels. No, no, just a slight improvement off of 2022. And that for that, he will tell you that you should praise him. Essentially, please vote for me. I'm giving you the second worst of all time. Parentheses, we're also the worst of all time. So I don't know if that's something that people are going to connect with when they're voting, but it is important when you look at all of the, of course, individual items uh, since 2019. It gets a little bit more uh, uh, terrible. Uh, turkey up 32 percent. Pumpkin pie mix up 34 percent. Pie shells up 39 percent. Ham up 97 percent. Rolls up 54 percent. Stuffing up 41 percent. Potatoes up 30 percent. Green beans up 32 percent. I might remind you that's basically entirely going on during Biden's presidency. Kind of a problem. It's completely shameless that they continue to do this, but it goes back to a, another ongoing theme. They are convinced the American people are the dumbest collection of people that has ever been gathered. They believe that you are so stupid that you will believe this is a good thing, that you will believe this is something worthy of bragging about, that you will believe anything. They think you will believe anything and you're so stupid you will never spend one second thinking about what they're actually saying that is their entire wager they are betting the presidency the leadership of the free world on the fact that you are so dumb you will never spend a moment thinking about anything that they say critically what, a, what an amazing and disgusting thing for a president to believe. But it is exactly where they are. Let me give you another example. This is just from yesterday. Total jobs created by president. Well, you, you know, you can look at this and, and note a bunch of different things. For example, um, they don't put any Democrats uh, on, on this list. And a lot of people pointed that out. Not all that important, honestly, to what they're trying to do, though. You see that it's the first 33 months in office. So you might say, well, wait a minute, Reagan's really low on this list because, of course, obviously, as we all know, 
quite clearly, um, you can keep that up for a second, uh, the, the, quite clearly that, you know, Reagan came in right after a disastrous run by Carter. He was in the middle of repairing it. His policies weren't even all the way through yet at this time. And you might see, of course, George W. Bush and think, well, wait a minute. His first 33 months of office had to do with 9-11. I mean, that was a big part of that. And, of course, the collapse um, of a, a previous, uh, he was in recession when he took office, as you may or may not know, the collapse of the first Internet bubble all going on at that time. That kind of explains that. But, again, Biden's number is so impressive. 13.954 million jobs. That's incredible. And you might, I don't know, I mean, none of those other things are the big ticket uh, point. The point here, of course, as anyone who has lived over the past five years would know, is that Joe Biden took office in the, at, at the very end of a pandemic period that, may, that, we, that we dealt with by closing down the economy. Again, these are policies that every Democrat agreed with and wanted to include, continue not only through 2021, but also 2022. Of course, some Republicans, most Republicans fought back against those policies as Biden became president. And people like, let's say, Ron DeSantis, for an example, DeSantis opens up his economy early. The economy starts thriving long before these blue states do. In here are the benefits of that. While this was going on, they were calling him Death Santis and saying he was trying to kill grandmothers, and then they're taking credit for all the jobs created inside of his state. Of course, this is completely absurd. Everyone remembers that COVID existed, that the economy closed down, that all these jobs are a result. Any president could have put a bunch of these on the board. And of course, Joe Biden actually hurt the economy with the policies that he actually put in. But anybody who was president would have seen a rebound because fewer people were dying and businesses were opening up. Again, policies the White House over and over again opposed. How dumb do they think you are? They think you forgot about the COVID pandemic. Stop for a second and think about the meeting that must have occurred to put this out. Hey, should we say uh, we got you know, a bunch of millions of jobs out there? This will be incredible. Well, wait a minute. Everyone's going to remember that the only reason why is we took office at the very base of the pandemic. So no one had really opened up or at least not a lot of places had. So the gains in jobs are really just about the pandemic opening. Yeah, but counterpoint, what if everyone forgets the pandemic happened? What do you mean? What are you talking about? Everyone should be able to look at that immediately and know exactly what they're doing. Yet there are so many people out there that, of course, don't. And they're betting on their voters saying, you know what? We're so stupid. We're not going to be able to look at this. We're not even going to check it out. They are depending on their voters being so dumb that they will never even try to understand how they're coming up with those numbers. And you know what? Truth is. They're probably right. Who does America? As we approach the new year, it's time to think about becoming a healthier, more energetic you. Yes, it's 2024. You gotta turn things around a little bit. If you've been dealing with low energy or maybe gain some extra LBs or plan to, in the holiday season, like I do, um, make sure you look at everything that you can do to make yourself healthier. Maybe uh, your liver is something to consider. Your liver is super important for staying healthy. One in three Americans are now living with a sluggish, fatty liver. And all of that booze and carb-packed potatoes you're going to be downing over the next few weeks, it's not going to help the liver so much. So you better be prepared for 2024 because it's going to get to be a crazy year and you need all the energy you can get to make it through. One thing that could help is Liver Health Formula it has 11 powerful botanicals that help recharge and protect your liver. If you buy today, you'll get a free bottle of blood sugar formula to reduce sugar cravings. Visit getliverhelp.com slash stew, getliverhelp.com slash stew. Now you can visit your uh, this website and get your free bonus gift. Don't miss the chance to start the year feeling your best. It's getliverhelp.com slash stew. I'm joined now by Dan Andros. He is the med managing editor over at CBN News and host of CBN's Quick Start podcast, which you can subscribe to now wherever you get your podcast. Dan, thank you so much for coming on the program. Yeah, thanks for having me. I like the Caitlin Clark uh, jersey. Yes. That you that's, did you ever think you would be yes. a person who would wear a women's basketball jersey on national television? 
Nope. <laughs> um, but she's awesome. She's uh, she's actually really entertaining to watch. Yeah. I feel like it's the first. Uh, Diana Taurasi had her moments, but uh, I, there have been very few female basketball players that I ever actually got any joy in watching, and she's f- just fun to watch. She's bombs she is, shots I, from all over the court. It's crazy. Like, look, um, she. There are a lot of good women's basketball players, right? Mm-hmm. Like, they're they're out there, but she's the only one I've ever experienced where I'm constantly just going, "Oh my gosh!" <laughs> like watching the screen. <laughs> I mean, it's very true. I can shoot from pretty far, and she's got me way outranged. It's really impressive, it's, and it's legitimately fun to watch. All right, we'll, we'll maybe we'll get into uh, more yeah. Caitlin Clark talk here in a second. I want to start, though, with uh, a little uh, version of true or false. The way this is going to work, All right. I'll lay out a statement. You tell me if you think it's true or false, and then give me your explanation why you think that, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. Um, And let's start in the world of politics. Let me start with this, and this is a big question that a lot of people are asking themselves. Will Joe Biden be the Democratic nominee for president when it comes to Election Day 2024? That's a a tough one. I can't do like a PolitiFact, like half true. No. (laughs) I can't do one of those. Joe Um, Biden is the nominee, true or false? I'm going to say true. I'm going to say true. And the reason why is, you know, if he's if his heart is still beating, Mm -hmm. I do think um, that he doesn't want to let it go. And I don't know how you can force someone out who doesn't want to let it go. And there's no reason for him to be in office right now. He shouldn't have. I mean, remember, Barack Obama was the one before he ran that said, don't do it, Joe. You don't have to do this. And he kind of foreshadowed it. He was the first one that sort of said, like, maybe you should just go home and retire and just sort of live on that beach and enjoy it. So that's kind of where I'm at on that. He obviously doesn't want to let it go. And I don't see how you can possibly force him out. Yeah, you, it, people over- underrate the power that the president of the United States has and the and what that role is. And while, yes, there are a lot of asterisks to that with Joe Biden and you know, a lot of people might be running the, the show behind the scenes. But the bottom line is he's got the gig. He needs to want to leave it. And he has a multi-decade attachment to this job that he wants to keep. All right, let me go to number two here. If Joe Biden doesn't run, Kamala Harris gets the nomination. True or false? Oh my gosh. I'm going to have to go. I'm going to have to go. I'm going to have to go true. I mean, I just don't see, I mean, it's just, it pains me to say that because it's, uh, it's, it's scary, scary to think about that. But, uh, I think it's true. I I don't see how you can go outside of the, uh, you know, to the Gavin Newsom's of the world. It's just too much groundwork to lay. Like it's just much easier. You've got it already in place. She's vice president and, um, it makes people feel comfortable. Well, sane people, not comfortable, but you know, their party, they'll feel like, well, she's there, she's doing it. So I think, I think she'd be there. Yeah. I actually, and this is maybe going to surprise people that we agree on this. I think the answer is true as well. Uh, Just because it would be very hard to skip her over the argument that the Democrats would have to make would be, I mean, a bunch of minority women. Yeah. Yeah, You have to have the minority woman. You can't overlook the minority woman in this case, uh, just by their bizarre, (laughs) to go with white guy. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. It would be really (laughs) tough to do with their bizarre intersectional logic. The only way I think it wouldn't happen is if they came up with someone else who was able to check those same boxes. The name I was thrown out there is Michelle, Michelle Obama. I don't know that that's necessarily a thing, but somebody who would fall into that category could maybe alleviate this, but it would be very difficult to go around her. Um, next up, there should be a legal maximum age for the presidency, just like there is a legal minimum age. True or false? True, 100% true. And I think um, right now we have case in point in the in the White House. And it's sad, Stu. I mean, you we like you watch Joe Biden. We all saw Joe Biden when he was vice president and before that. And like, you know, he had his gaffes, right? He, he's always very gaff prone. But this is beyond just gaffes. Like this is just clearly someone who's aging and suffering the normal decline of anyone who is aging. Right. Like all of our grandparents, when they aged and got to this level that or parents, if you're older, this is what happens. This is just what happens when you age. And it's you, you, the president of the United States is an office that is not for someone who's super old and, you know, getting towards the end of their life. Uh, it, it, just follow up here. Do you have a number? What, what would you place the maximum age at? What, what's the number? I'd put it at 70. 70. 
I yeah. think that, that, that's it's younger than I think most people. Of course, it would eliminate the top two contenders. We should probably note. Uh, but I mean, again, maybe uh, retroactive. You right? can, I mean, yeah, you could grandfather you them yeah. in if you want to. But yeah. it just going forward, maybe that's a, a good number. It's funny you, you mentioned yeah, as you get older, things change. And I noticed this too in like our like group texts with our high school friends, where you know a lot of the conversations are about injuries. Um, ailments, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, different health concerns. And we're in our 40s. Like, I, if you're in your 70s and 80s, uh, it's it's difficult. I don't know that I – I don't know. I, I think I would say false on the on the, on the number. I, I, I don't think there should be a legal maximum number. I, I just feel like we sh- – I don't know, maybe – I'm big on the on the on the term limits, um, but I don't know. Maybe maybe there should be. I don't know what that number what? should be. Maybe. Yeah. Well, all right, Stu. Here, hypothetical <laughs> question for you. Yeah, then, yeah. okay, let's say Joe Biden, lo- like, let's say he loses this time, right? Mm-hmm. Now, Trump or whoever gets in, and it's four years past, and then Biden comes back after it and wants to run again. And now he'll be like 98 or something yeah, or whatever he's at. You wouldn't put it past them to actually be elected. And then still would yeah. be out there okay. saying, yep, All right. we got to let it happen. Well, here we go. Let's set it at life expectancy. I will set it at life expectancy. If the life okay. expectancy, right. it can move. So if people like find out, hey, we have aging that improves and you can get to 90 or 100 or 110, maybe you can have okay. older people. But let's set it there. That's start your first term before <laughs> you're supposed to die. There you go. <laughs> I'll give you that. All right, next up uh, on our list. How about this? The Biden family will face real consequences for all of their corruption. True or false? False. False. Absolutely not. I've j- just because I've never, I mean, I've, we've been covering this long enough, Stu, where I just don't, I guess I would, I would only believe it if I actually physically saw it. I cannot handle that kind of rejection <laughs> of assuming what should actually happen Versus what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. I just don't see it. I mean, I've never seen it before. And, and there's no indication to me that the system will produce any sort of justice. Uh, um, I, I think you're right on that. I, 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 it's like hedging your life a little bit. I can't believe I can't believe good things will ever happen. So I just assume right. the worst will happen. And honestly, the way they've played with this legal situation, they've been able to pass a lot of these you know, end dates, for, at least for Hunter Biden, to even be charged for a lot of this stuff. So at the end of the day, I think it might, they might face real consequences electorally. I think it's possible they, they pay some yeah. price for it with voters, but I don't think they're going to face any legal consequences. You, Stu, I just got to ask you a quick question. I mean, you've watched the show American Greed, right? Yes. When they go through yeah. these schemes and like, and then they try to come up with some excuse and then the prosecutor's just like, it, it was the dumbest thing I've ever heard. It was ridiculous. It was so obvious they were guilty. Like, does, how does Joe Biden, yeah. like, it's, like, they're like, wow, well, I don't know, it's this Hunter's issue. Like, does, does Joe Biden pass an episode of American Greed? Like, <laughs> no. you know, if the... <laughs> Absolutely not. I mean, it's so laughable. <laughs> they, they are still, I still heard a podcast last week where they said, look, uh, Biden is dealing with these uh, corruption uh, accusations. Now, there's no evidence to them whatsoever, no. <laughs> but it's important to note that he is facing... What are you talking about? They have texts, no they have bank records, they have... Uh, on the record, they have comments from Joe Biden that are on the record that point to all of these things. They have witnesses. They have their business partners that have come out and said these things occurred. Like, at what what is evidence if this is not it? I, I don't even understand it. It's, it's incredible. Um, let me go to, how about this? The border will do significant damage to the Biden campaign in 2024. Um, false. Um, I just think the media, the, the media will just suppress it. They will minimize it. Uh, we saw when Trump was in office, we had, um, you know, all of the fanfare, you know, AOCs down there crying at the fence and you just don't have that anymore. And I think it's, it's a, it's a real issue that I think Democrats are starting to pay attention to, but I don't, I think the media will just mask it. That's mm. kind of where I think it'll go. Yeah, I think I think that's probably true. The border has been really bad for a long time. And he, in a way, he has paid a price for it. I mean, his polling on that issue is really, really bad. I just don't know if it's going to get any worse. I think anybody who's gettable on the border is already, you know, out of the Biden um, wagon. Yeah. And uh, and that's I don't think it can get too much worse. Although, I mean, you could see a real catastrophe happening on the Biden that could shake it up. But I would say my answer to that would be false as well. Um, how about Donald Trump? Donald Trump should have participated in 
in the Republican debates. True or false? I say true, which I think is probably um, going to be not the popular answer among especially people who support Trump because they're saying, oh, it's just really smart for him not to do it. But I, I am of the ilk that believes that you owe it to people to get out there and actually talk about your platform um, and say, let people know why they should vote for you and not just ride the polls. And, um, you know, I think Trump was in office for four years, so we know a great deal about him one way or another. And so uh, you could make that case. But I still want to see. I mean, he's got a lot of things to answer for that are going on right now that I would like to hear him explain if if not because you feel he owes it to the people, if for anything, to help us inform what a general election would look like, right? His his opponents right now are going to hit him on these charges and things like that. Um, so I would like to see how he responds to that, because then I can judge how he's going to do in a general election. Yeah, I mean, I think true is the answer to this as well. And I, I kind of land on the same uh, path as you. I, I would separate it out and say strategically, I think false. Like, I think strategically it was the right yeah. move for him to win the nomination, which in theory is his ultimate goal. Um, but when it comes to whether he should show up, I, I think the real answer to that is true. I think it's something that, you know, we're going to see a lot more of this now. We saw this in Arizona um, when it came to um, Katie Hobbs against Carrie Lake. She just didn't debate. Didn't and, debate. And yeah. she got away with it and won. And it was a good strategic decision, I suppose. She won the race. But, like, I don't like the fact that we're empowering uh, politicians to completely avoid the process. It's like, you know, if you were uh, 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 in the PGA, you were just like, well, you no longer had to qualify if, we, if you're really famous. You could just kind of walk into all these events. <laughs> right. And it's like, well, that's not the way this is supposed to work. I, I just feel like it, it would be great for the American people to actually see this happen. I think there's uh, and we're in a different world for 2016 to 2024 was a long time. And the issues are different, and I would like to hear a little bit more from Trump and be pressed on these issues uh, than he has been so far. All right, I want to take a break, Dan. We'll come back with some news of the day, some other stuff as well. True, false Thanksgiving edition right here on Blaze TV with Dan Andros of CBN. Let me tell you about realestateagentsitrust.com. Buying or selling a home sucks. It's just not fun. It's not a fun process. You don't want to be on the hook for all the stuff. And you ever go in and sign all that paperwork? You're like, what am I even signing? I, hundreds of thousands of dollars are on this paper. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. You need someone on your side who really understands this stuff and someone who knows the market, someone who knows the best timing, uh, try to do the best you can to time the market. No one's going to be perfect on that, but you need someone with real knowledge and background to figure that out. Realestateagentsitrust.com is the place to go to find that person, no matter where you are in the country. Find the best agent to help you make your real estate transaction the best transaction possible. It's realestateagentsitrust.com, a free service to you. Check it out now, realestateagentsitrust.com. We're back with Dan Andrews, Managing Editor at CBN News. Dan, we're doing true or false. Got some uh, news-related questions here for you. And let's start with okay. Israel. Okay. Israel must prove that the hospital is a command center or everything else falls apart. False. And this has been a frustrating sort of theme that I've seen pop up. The moving of the goalposts. Mm. Why do we have to prove that it is a command center? Pay attention to the media when they shift the goalposts, we know they're using these hospitals and schools, et cetera, as human shields. They CNN live on their feed discovers a tunnel there, this massive structure that they send a drone down 100 feet. And it's like 20 feet from the hospital. And they're like, but we don't know if it's a command center. So what? I don't know. I mean, so what if they've got. Uh, a stash of gummy bears down there that these terrorists are going to get. <laughs> and that's what they're going down there for. And they're just hiding in there so they don't get blown up. I don't care if it's a command center or not. They're clearly using it as human shields. So I would say false on this one. Yeah, I would totally agree false. I mean, no other nation is held to this standard where they have to prove <laughs> every single thing that they do uh, is of some, you know, massive... Uh, military value. Look, international law is a guideline you can use. I mean, look, I am of the belief a sovereign nation makes its own decisions on these things. But even if you look at international law, if terrorists are using a hospital for any purpose, not as a command center, but for any purpose, it is no mm -hmm. longer a protected 
uh, building when it comes to international law. Uh, they are on the right side of this. And the, you're right. They're saying at first it has to be, well, wait a minute. We thought because we, before they were like, oh, the doctors are perfect. Every, everything is going to be fine there. Then it was like, well, some terrorists know or, or live there or work there. But um, the, 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 the doctors were unaware. Then it was, well, the doctors know, but they have no choice. Then it was, uh, well, it has to be a command center. They have to keep every layer more and more proof heaped on the side of Israel. And I've noticed no, nothing is required of Hamas. So not even to agree to a ceasefire. They don't even have to say they want a ceasefire. They could just keep firing rockets, and then Israel's supposed to ceasefire. The, the, the standards are completely out of whack, in my view, at least. Um, all right, um, uh, next, next one on sure or false here with Dan Andros. We should immediately cease all Ukraine funding, true or false? Oh, you guys are going to love me on this one, some of oh, you. Uh, uh, I'm, I say false. Hmm. And here's why. I mean, I, I just feel like this doesn't have to be a zero sum game. I agree that we have to we just don't give blank checks and we don't we don't, uh, you know, or, w w which way was the question? I might have answered that reverse. Uh, we we uh, the question, the, the statement was we should immediately cease all Ukraine funding. Cease funding. I'm sorry. True. OK, true. Uh, Wait. No, I'm sorry. I'm like, do you totally want to give money up. to Ukraine False. or not? Okay. Just I'm too close. Up. Yeah, no, um, I say yes. So. <laughs> like I said, it doesn't have to be a blank check. I'm right. sorry. I like totally like, like uh, second guess myself on that one. Yeah, you were right. Um, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I was right. So I, I just don't think it has to be a blank check. I don't agree with that. But uh, I do think that some assistance is fine. I don't know. I don't get why it has to be a zero sum game. Um, I think, you know, it's interesting because I, I would say all funding. It's, it's a it is a nuanced sort of question for a true false game. I, I, and that's probably why we're going back and forth on it. I think it's in, I think you wouldn't want to necessarily cease it today. I think you'd want to say, ideally, hey, uh, look, this is going to run out in four months. So whatever right. the number is, you better figure out a way to get a, a peace deal done before then, because after that point, you're on your own. And, you know, yeah. of course, the other part of funding is also. Um, humanitarian funding, which we you know, I think uh, the American people have more of an appetite for. I will say we don't have any money. So it is, I, <laughs> you better figure out a way to stop this. This idea that you're going to have a blank check that is going to last forever has to be off the table and needs to get off the table, I think, pretty quickly, uh, yeah. to your point. Okay, America first should mean international never. True or false? America first should mean international never. Uh, I am going to say false on that one. And again, uh, the spending on our international budget, it's only like 1%, it's single digits of our federal budget, whatever the number is. Now, I'm sure it's a little higher now, given our Ukraine spending and everything else, but it's still in the single digits. And I am, I am of the belief that this whole idea that we can just sort of tuck in our turtle shell here in America and hide and just pretend like, well, let them deal with their own problems there and it'll be great. I think if you let that fester and the rest of the world starts burning around you, um, I think that's a that eventually those chickens come home to roost and we're going to have to deal with stuff. And right now you're seeing what a weak America does that isn't involved as much around the world with Biden. You're seeing what happens. China's getting ready to go after Taiwan. You're seeing Russia go into Ukraine. You're seeing Iran step up these attacks on Israel. All this stuff is happening, I think, precisely because we have a weak president right now when it comes to presenting a, a foreign presence around. Um, and so, I mean, we can have that discussion on funding on what are the levels, but I do think we have interests abroad that absolutely are American interests and we have to continue to pursue those things. You can't just put your head in the sand. Yeah, I, 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 mean, I, I think people can get overblown on this. Like, I think the way it's written, international never, I would not agree with. I think I want to be an international involvement skeptic. I, I want to lean to do less in all these areas. But Absolutely. I, I, I don't want to jump into everything. I, you know, Nikki Haley is a little bit uh, maybe hawkish for me, uh, the way she sounds sometimes. But on the other hand, like, I, I don't think we can just do nothing. I don't think we can be completely uninvolved. The new right seems to want to go that way more and more. And, and I'm right. a little skeptical of that. Um, yeah. Let me give you one quick one. Let's do this one quickly. Elon Musk has been good for Twitter. True or false? I'm going to say true. Um, I think... Um, look, it's his company. And so everyone who complains about all the little different things, they don't like the check marks and everything else, go pound sand. It's his company. He can do what he wants. The guy spent $44 billion on it or whatever he spent to get this thing. But I think overall, he's absolutely been a positive. I mean, think about what Twitter was before 
when we're suppressing the Hunter Biden story, you're not allowed to say stuff. You can't question the vaccine. And look at where Elon is. I mean, this guy's not a raging conservative, but he's certainly friendly to a lot of um, pro free speech type ideas and certainly favorable towards many more um, ideas and um, I don't know, I guess topics and issues that conservatives care about compared to the last guy who it was clearly just flaming progressive. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know how to, I honestly, like, I think if I had to gun to my head and I'm being really honest, I would say false on this one. I, I don't think he's been good for Twitter. I think he's been good for the what you outlined, which is the censorship stuff. And that is important. And it's, you know, a super important issue. I'm not saying it's not. I think he's been better, certainly, than the old crew on that. But the site itself, I think, sucks sometimes. Like, I, all that <laughs> stuff that he did, you're right, I should pound sand. I have no right in any input into his decision-making process. But the site does not operate as well as it used to operate. I, I do feel like it's harder to use. Like, he's got all these weird tears. I can't tell when people are real <laughs> and when they're fake anymore. Like, I don't know. I, I feel like that part is a bit – he's been – a worse businessman than I could have predicted. That that has yeah. surprised me. Um, but, yeah, the tinkering with the formatting is has been weird. But uh, but again, I mean, I mean, I, I, me personally, I'd, I'd rather have some weird formatting than than the, uh, yeah, the catastrophe of everybody getting censored and they can't say their yeah. stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, a few yeah. more. I want to change gears a little bit okay. to uh, some more important things. Let's start with this one. The Philadelphia Eagles are the best team in the National Football League. True or false? False, because they're not allowed to be. They just should not <laughs> allow to be. Because most of their fans are insane. You don't have to suffer through Philadelphia talk radio and sports radio like I do <laughs> up here in the Philadelphia area. Mm -hmm. Stu is the only sane Eagles fan out there and <laughs> him and maybe one or two others. So they don't maybe. deserve it. That's why. I mean, first of all, I appreciate that. Uh, I don't know if that's true. I, you should have heard me screaming at my television last night as they beat the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, I sounded insane, and they actually won the game. Um, but I, what I will say is I think they are the best team in the NFL, but I will say I think the margin of their lead in that category is uh, significantly less than it was last none the, year. None of the team they are one of the better teams and probably the best team, but the, n none of them are really – like, I never watch one of these teams and think, wow, yeah. no one's beating them. Yeah, I agree. I, I, last year, I pretty much thought that. And, and, and while I knew they could lose to the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, I, I think they were actually the better team in that game. I, I think they, they wound up losing. They had a really bad fumble. They had a couple stupid things happen. They wound up losing to a really good team that was very close to them. But I actually felt the Eagles were the better team. If you go through the entire playoffs right now, like, the Eagles could lose – their next three games, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Uh, so anyway, I think they are, but it's the margin's super tight and can really go either way. Um, next up, the NBA is being ruined by load management. True or false? Uh, I'm going to say true. I mean, what a waste when you show up to a game. I mean, imagine. Spending, I mean, I've I've only I've gone to a couple games, and I went with I have three sons who like basketball, and last year I went to the Celtics Sixers game, and I forget what it cost me, but it was insane mm -hmm. just to get like mediocre tickets to this, to, to, to see this game. And then imagine going to one of those games and then the stars just aren't in. Like, I mean, I look, I've only got budget to spend a thousand dollars or whatever it was one time <laughs> for one of these games. I can't just keep going to all these games <laughs> with all my kids. And then you're just not going to play. You're making hundreds of thousands of dollars and you're not going to play. I mean, it's ridiculous, and uh, it's, uh, you know, I don't know what the science is on it, but I have a hard time believing that these guys in the prime shape of their life just can't can't play two nights in a row. I, I totally agree with you on this. I think I would argue true as well. And, and it's funny because, like, you're right. Like, the, is, the, is the difference in health that significant from playing 75 to 82 games? Like, I don't even understand it. Like, you're hurt, you're hurt. Fine. But if you're healthy, just get out there and play. These are not part-time workers, or they shouldn't be treated as if they're part-time shift workers. They're making millions and millions of dollars. I don't know. Have them stay full-time. Okay, two more for you. Uh, <laughs> All right. This is an important one to me. Mac and cheese is a must-have Thanksgiving dinner item. <sighs> must-have. True or false? I'm going to say false. I, I don't need – I don't – I mean, I'm thinking Thanksgiving. I'm thinking turkey. I'm thinking stuffing. I'm thinking the bread. I'm thinking apple pie. I mean, I love mac and cheese, but I just, it's not the day that I have to have it. 
Mm. See, I, I, I say it's totally true. Must have uh, item. It's a, look, you're right about all the stuff that you said. These, those are the things you think of when it comes to Thanksgiving. It's just that mac and cheese is an incredible addition to that, that palate. Like it's I'm not just, turning it down. Mm. I mean, if someone throws mac and cheese on the table, I mean, I'm not turning it down. I'm diving right in. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, I don't think it has to be there. I'm, I'm good. I'm getting stuffed without it. I got to have it. I got to have it there. <laughs> and uh, like that's, that's, that's the difference in opinion. Let me give you the last one here, Dan. Cranberry sauce ruins Thanksgiving dinner. True or false? Absolutely true. I, I just don't <laughs> understand it. I mean, I mean, just delete it from existence. Does anyone ever get cranberry? The ocean spray, like the cranberry juice. Is anyone going, yeah, I'm going to get me some good cranberry juice. Come on. <laughs> this stuff is awful. I don't, I don't, what? I'm, I'm going all in on this one. I don't, I don't need cranberry sauce on anything. It ruins it. Mm. First of all, this is your worst take of this entire segment uh, right now. Cranberry sauce is fantastic on a, an after Thanksgiving sandwich. It's incredible. And I will say, I don't know if you know this, but Ocean Spray is a multi-billion dollar company. So yes, people are buying cranberry products. This is something that actually happens in this world. Dan. It's probably like an ingredient for something else. Like nobody's drinking this stuff. And I'm, I don't know. I'm, it's a conspiracy. It's a conspiracy. Give me my tinfoil hat. No one's drinking cranberry juice. It's not happening. Well, you know, you do. Unless there's alcohol in it or something well well first of all people do drink alcohol and it is a, a delicious mixer but i will say also um uh you are the first person on this show to ever take on big cranberry and i appreciate <laughs> you doing it the people are here for you dan i'm sure dan andros managing editor of cbn news if you if you have one of these questions that pissed you off and you were really annoyed at our answers feel free to post them on twitter at studios america and you can put at dan andros in there tell him no, how no, terrible just send him to stew no Obviously tell him how terrible just his cranberry stew. sauce take was <laughs> <laughs> CBN's Quick Start Podcast. Team I'm sure this will be cranberry. Let's go. <laughs> this will definitely be a segment on the Quick Start Podcast as well. I'm sure. Uh, Dan, thanks so much for coming on the program. All right, thanks too. If you're looking for some great viewing over the holidays, The Blind: The True Story of the Robertson Family is now available for purchase on Blaze TV. Uh, the Blind takes you on a great journey through the life of Phil Robertson, which was a real roller coaster. Frankly, <laughs> there's a lot to go over. Uh, the Blind isn't a Blaze Media production, so you know it's not our thing. We don't own it. We can't include it as part of your Blaze TV Plus uh, subscription for legal reasons, but we can offer it for purchase, and you can purchase it. I mean, now look, you're thinking, I'm going to purchase it. I'm just going to get it from my Amazon account or my Apple account. Why give big tech uh, all your money? They don't like you very much. So go to blazetv.com slash the blind and get it there. $19.99 right now. It's blazetv.com slash the blind, blazetv.com slash the blind. Well, you may detect I am in a bit of a good mood after last night's thrilling 21-17, Philadelphia Eagles victory over the Kansas City Chiefs. Not exactly revenge for the Super Bowl. You know, I'd much kind of rather won the last one. Uh, but it was a great time, and I got to watch it with my kids, which was really, really fun. And they stayed up really late, and we watched the game, and it was great. And, you know, we're going to go into the Thanksgiving weekend here. This is our last show before Thanksgiving uh, break. Uh, but it will be uh, it'll be a great time for to connect with family and, and, and just get just shovel your gullet full of food. It's fantastic. It's a great time of year and we're just kicking it off. And just think of how many pounds we're all going to be able to gain together over the next few weeks. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so watch a bunch of football. Enjoy your family and have a great Thanksgiving. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe to Blaze TV, we'd encourage you to do so. BlazeTV.com slash stew. The promo code is stew. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>